our confession of uh, sin, our call to the confession of sin this morning comes from Psalm 32, verse 11. Be glad in the Lord and rejoice, you righteous, and shout for joy, all you upright in heart. We continue to look at the duties required in the first commandment. You shall have no other gods before me. According to the Westminster Larger Catechism, the duties required in the first commandment are the knowing and acknowledging of God to be the only true God and our God, and to worship and glorify him accordingly. One of the ways we worship and glorify him is by rejoicing in him. It is not just a privilege to be able to rejoice in God. It's a duty. It is a duty required of being one of his children. We can violate the principle to rejoice in God, I think, in one of two ways. The first is not being joyful toward him. When we consider what God has accomplished for us and his attributes, it is plain that we should be glad in him. For one thing, he created us, each one of us. He has given us good things to live. Most importantly, he has granted us a so great salvation through the blood of Jesus Christ our Lord. But, you say, life doesn't always give us joyful things to be joyful over. We can have much joy over the recent babies that have added to our number in the Spratt and Beeler and Wharton families. But some of those families have lost little ones in the recent memory that caused a great deal of sorrow, which is the opposite of joy. And some here, like Hannah, have been unable to conceive children, which also causes sorrow. Life throws curveballs at us. We pray regularly for people that have life-threatening illnesses. We can run into financial difficulties or be forced to move or to change jobs. Let's face it, life isn't always joyful. And yet, we are to rejoice in God. We are to rejoice in him even in the bad spots. And the reason is that he is the all-powerful, the all-knowing, the all-present creator and ruler of the cosmos, the entire universe. Because life doesn't throw things at us. The Almighty God governs all of life. If he thinks it is for our good to have difficulties like diseases or financial troubles or lost loved ones, then it is. It is for our good. God knows our troubles and has provided for them by his own troubles. God's son had to die in order to redeem a people for himself. He knows our troubles. During Christ's earthly ministry, he suffered all the troubles common to us humans. He was rejected by the majority of the people God sent him to save. He suffered at the hands of cruel men, all for our sakes. For that, for that great salvation, we can rejoice in God, despite the circumstances of life. The second way this principle can be violated is by rejoicing too much in other things besides God. Certainly it is possible to rejoice too much in the material things that God has given us rather than the God that has given them. Living in the most affluent society in the history of the world makes this a particular temptation. Like the Jews in Deuteronomy 8, God warned them that they would forget him when they had beautiful houses, when their flocks had multiplied, when their silver and gold had multiplied. Then their hearts would be lifted up, and they would forget the Lord God who brought them out of Egypt, out of, the bon- out of the house of bondage. I see another thread in this also, though. Recently, in listening to conservative uh, talk shows or podcasts or reading on the Internet, there are definitely those that are spending a lot of time delighting right now in the failures of our current president. And given our love for the Psalms, including the imprecatory Psalms, we should rejoice at the failures of God's enemies. We should rejoice when righteous laws are enacted, or as in the case of the Dobbs decision, when unrighteous ones are overturned. But we must be very careful here. God tells us in Romans that we are to feed our enemies when they are hungry. We are to give them a drink when they are thirsty. For in so doing, we heap burning coals upon their heads. 
we are not to over, be overcome by evil. We are to overcome evil with good. So we must make sure that our rejoicing is in the Lord, not just in the failures of others. We can rejoice that battles for God's kingdom are won, and we certainly rejoice that God will ultimately win the battle over evil. But we must be careful to rejoice in God, not just in the fighting of battles. This failure to rejoice in God, whether in the troubles of life or in rejoicing too much over things besides God, reminds us of our sin. We need to confess our sin, all of it, before a holy God in order to worship him rightly. I therefore invite you to kneel with me, confessing your personal sin privately and then confessing corporately as printed in the bulletin. <clears throat> 